Great Britain, Octagon MMA is coming. November 4th at the AO Arena in Man. Excel in the white shorts, blue corner, Jan Chuska. Black shorts, red corner. Off we go, we touch gloves. Scheduled for three five minute rounds here in the Stranitz at the open air arena. The sun is coming down. And off we go, Luke Barnett. Oh, straight in with it. Both getting a headlock. Interesting decision. There goes for that guillotine. Oh, Misses it and goes to his back. And this is where we've seen Kexel just dominate multiple opponents. He loves this top position, will work from inside guard. Yeah, has the single butterfly here, trying to elevate. Now double. It's difficult up against the fence because it, it, it affects your posture. Still has those legs with the hips on top from Kexel. Very heavy. And like you said, very dominant in this position. This is his style. This is what he wants. Got here very quickly. But off his back, does have some uh, some submissions, some attacks. Does Jan young, Gusta. Yeah, Jan Juska, he is somebody, you know, with this style, with Kexel on top, you gotta, you don't wanna spend too much time here, right? Especially if you've not had a full camp, you've taken this on 48 hours notice. Samuel Bark had to come out of the fight, and we wish him well, we, we hope he recovers. Literally felt very ill, went to hospital, and this was just before he was supposed to fly off to uh, join us here in Prague. Yeah, Kexel was very hard to finish, very hard to submit. So even in these positions, he's so used to being here. Even if you do get a bite on something, like he had the guillotine, he's very good at evading those and getting out and making small adjustments. So this pressure, see how his hips are forward? He's nice and high. He's trapping the legs. When you're in the guard up against the fence, it's the worst place to be. You cannot do much from this position. You really cannot. A little hits there with the ankle, but they're not going to cause much damage and Kexel can hit with those big heavy elbows yeah. nice ground and pound shots you know he's, he's in a very very dominant place here and you know it came pretty easy right uh, you, you saw Jan Chuska commit to that attack on the neck for the guillotine it was an unorthodox double headlock position you don't see very often and he decided to dive for that guillotine but like I said Kexel very used to escaping those yeah strong in this top spot already two minutes 15 seconds have gone in this round, two minutes 45 left. Oh. And she says that short, compact torso, that short, strong body does Kexel. So it's very hard to isolate a limb because it just has, you know, sh short limbs, short movement, little adjustments, makes it difficult. You can see on the bottom trying to isolate that left arm so we can try and throw something up, but it gets put on the hip. That's nice work. That's going to help, but gets shucked off now by Kexel. Yeah, he's trying to make some space. Such a pressure fighter is Kexel. This is exactly what, like I'm saying, like he had a change of opponent, but I feel like this is what he would want to do in that fight as well. So he, his game plan doesn't really change. Oh, yeah, and Chuska trying to use the cage now to work his way back to his feet. But double butterflies in now. What do you need to do from this spot, Luke? Needs to elevate and create space, but now he's giving up one of those hooks. Very difficult because of the pressure Kexel has, but he's, uh, he's butt screwed himself up, so he could now get his legs under him. But as a taller fighter, long on Ranger, it's difficult to get those legs under you. But he, he has a wizard on the left side, so he could turn downwards and try and turn to get his knees, onto his knees up against the fence. Needs to butt scoot back. And when I say butt scoot, I mean bring your hips to the cage. So you're almost sitting, so you're sitting up with the fence behind you. But he's not even attempting to stand at the moment. It goes back down, fishing now with that wrist control. Does well to get that hook in, though, to get back to those double butterfly hooks. Extends well, nice little elbow. He's being active off the bottom, but, you know, it's very ineffective work. And it's just bread and butter for Kexel, right? This is... Uh in and out. In fact, all the way through his amateur career, this style stuck. It's been hugely successful for him in his uh, professional career as well. 
It's just comfortable here. This is what he's used to. So his heart rate is going to stay very, very minimal. He's going to be very happy with, with this position. And he could do this all day, which we've seen him do. Round after round after round. This is what he wants. This is the grinding style that he has. And it's very, very uh, frustrating if you're the man on the bottom. Yeah, Jan Chuska trying with all of his might. There you go. There's the butt scoot, right? But look at that. As soon as he does, Kexel just pulls that butt back to arch that spine. And now stepped over, controlling that left leg. Yeah, now just has the single butterfly on that right side. Going to be hard to elevate. Couldn't elevate with two hooks, so I doubt he's going to be able to do it with one. Final 15 seconds now upon us in this first round. Does well, though, to elevate there and get the double butterflies back. So, he, you know, he knows what he's doing. He's just struggling to do it. We need to watch the upper kicks here, does Kexel. Back to his feet. <laughs> he was ready to walk to the corner, but Jan Chuska says, no way, mate. There's some seconds left in this round, and I am back on my feet and ready to throw leather. Yeah, I think he thought the 10-second clacker was the end of the round. Jan Chuska, I got there. there yeah. go, oh, nice long hey. kick from Kexel. Oh, look at the tip spot odds. One to eight in favor of Kexel. Oh, a nice tip to that upper body. Oh, Jan Chuska is just such a fun fight. You can imagine the sparring rounds with him, Lengal, Rochelle. Going to the leg multiple times. Yeah. Then coming up, gets caught, though. Oh, look at the single. Look at the way he just shrugs that down to the mat. Now we need to see some urgency from him to get back to his feet. You see how effective he is when he's there? Yeah. And aggressive, too. Needs to be aggressive about getting up. Needs to try and, and, and explode here. Has, has the skill set. You've seen it with those double, double butterflies, manipulating the base, trying to make it work. But he needs to be urgent to stand back to his feet. Otherwise, this is going to be a repeat of the first round. And it pretty much is within the first 30, 40 tw seconds. 25 seconds. I, I marked it as he went to the mat. 25 seconds. And that's all it took uh, Kexel to get Jan Chuska back to that spot, back against the cage, and back where he works all day long. And again, we see he's got a low finish rate because he just does this, grinds out, doesn't overcommit to anything, just slowly works, you know, and then scores points and just demoralizes his opponents. But like you said, the late replacement might see the cardio fade quite quickly in the red corner. Yeah, you see the uh, the style of Kexel. You'd think he'd have submission finishes, but it's actually KO ones. In fact, that last one was a walk-away KO on the feet. That was in round number one. Up against Abu Bakar Sabirov. But from here, he just works peppers and stays busy enough that the referee, even though Gerd Richter is standing over them, he lets them keep going because it's just enough, right? It's just enough action activity to maintain the position. Exactly that, you know. He's not... He's not uh, solid there he continues to work there's output there's shots there's elbows there's movement it's controlling it's, it, it would be you can't take this position away from him. he worked hard to get it there got it there and now he's controlling it's very effective uh, work might not be the most entertaining style in the world but he's very very effective you can already see Three big elbow yeah, there with nice. the right hand side yeah very nice indeed oh and another one you can already see there's less activity in the guard off his back I say that, he tries to get his feet back in the game there, Jan Chuska. Yeah, framing there, Jan Chuska, and looking for that elbow. But now getting taken off the fence. You can tell that maybe he doesn't work so much cage wrestling or standing up on the cage, which is surprising with, you know, the quality that he has in his corner and in his gym, because that seems to be the missing part. Has a good ground game, obviously has a good stand-up game, and we see that a lot with some Thai boxers or strikers that come into MMA. This is the piece that you need, the cage wrestling, the stand-ups off the floor. A lot of people defend takedowns well, but once they get there, they struggle to get back to their feet. It's, a, it's an athletic pursuit to try and stand back up. You have to use a lot of energy. You can't, you know, just slowly move little by little, which is what he does with those little adjustments. But Scoots again gets yeah. up, but he needs an explosion now. He needs, yeah. needs a di dynamic movement, needs to get on his side, needs to get his hips under him, his knees under him. Tough with Kexel on top of you, tracking you out and beating you up. But that is the idea. Yeah, look at that, just pulls him away, puts him flat on his back once again. And it becomes demoralizing as well, right? Not just fatiguing physically, but mentally. If you get that position, you think, right, I need to explode now. And then just before you do, kicks out. 
pulls him away, puts him flat on his back again. And then with that frustration that you feel once you get to the feet, you have that urgency to do something, and sometimes you make a mistake because you feel like, I've got to go, I've got to go, I've got to go. And you overthrow, or you kick and you slip, or you do something stupid rather than staying, you know, precise and clinical. So it works on all spheres, like mentally and physically exhausting, and makes you cause more mistakes and errors, slowly start to pop out as the fight continues. We move into the final minute. Absolute dominance here from Kexel. And a mirror image of round number one, Luke, it is exactly the same. It took 25 seconds for Kexel to get it to the mat, caught that single leg, turned, got his man up against the cage, and he's been there ever since. Oh, replacing the mouthpiece there is Gerd Richter. I thought we were going to get a stand up for the last 30 seconds, which I, I imagine the crowd would have welcomed, right? Yeah, because we know, you know, Jan Kuska would have gone crazy. He opened up the round very effectively in, in, in this second. He attacked a lot better. He's getting the foot on the hip. He's trying, he's doing things, but just one step ahead at all times is Kexel. It's the fight we expected. Nearly getting that now with that left, that left hook. That butterfly hook trying to elevate his opponent. Almost got the sweep there. Five. As we enter our third and final round. Go, Richter. Richter will be getting us underway. There we go. Five minutes now for Jan Chuska to try and turn this around, or for Kexel to see this over the line. Look at the odds now, 13 to 1. Oh, look at this, Jan Chuska going for the takedown. Oh, and there's the hip toss. Interesting oh. decision. There, gets wrapped up, 40. gets thrown over. Sorry, 16 seconds, that's all it took. 16 seconds. And ended in a more dominant position. We haven't even seen him in the half guard. He's normally been in the guard. So maybe he'll try and progress now to the mount. If he can get to the mount, maybe he can get this fight out there and get a finish. Go Richter wants action. I feel like the crowd agree. It was a beautiful toss though, beautiful throw. Exactly, nice bite on the head. Just flipped him over with the hip toss. And as impressive as the control is from Kexel, you know, this is also, it's a sport, but it's an entertainment game, right, as well. You'd love to see, you would love to see a finish from this young man. Yeah, look at the uh, the contrast of fights we've just had with Akon coming out, the Jedi doing the entrance, the finish, the, yep. you know, the crowd reacted, they loved it. Now we've got this style of fight. It's, again, you win the fight and it's effective, but Octagon especially, the fans are the people that you need to impress. You need to, you need to like get their hearts and then when you do they love you forever and we've seen that with, with oh, athletes. Baba Yaga yeah. like that yep the athletes have grown hugely just because the fans and they get the opportunities and they get the fights and you know Ox can do that they invest in the stories beautiful work oh, though. he's up he's up and he's got the under look at that oh nice inside reap to get the takedown again though that is disheartening now yeah but technically it was brilliant right it was well timed use that motion the inside sweep to get it back to the mat yeah, technically sound is a great way to describe Kexel again now in the half guard on top nice little shots with the left hand this our feature about the preliminary card that will move us up into the main card by way of a half-time show Elizabeth Kopechka one of the uh, reality TV stars turned superstar singer over here in the Czech Republic will be uh, gifting that halftime show. I'm looking forward to that. I have only seen a small amount of the rehearsals, Luke. We are in for a treat with that for sure. I remember last year's halftime show was fantastic. It's a real moment that they have here at the Svanitsta, and it's, you know, I'm sure it's going to be the same, even more magical. There might be some fireworks. I, I don't think the uh, the police will allow it, but I'm not saying that it won't happen. <laughs> that sounds like I'm not saying that it will not happen. <laughs> that but sounds I like will Andre. say that they were warned not to use fireworks. Have you ever seen Andre or Pavel do as they're told? <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> it's almost like they, they dared him. Oh, don't do it, don't yeah. do it, don't do it. Okay. Two minutes remaining now. In this third round. Oh, it looks like we are going to see Kexel grind this one out unless Jan Chuska can pull something out, something phenomenal out. One minute, 45 seconds. And Kexel coming from that great gym, that fight lounge over in Dortmund, fight school in Hanover. We talk about it time and time again about the German scene 
It's needed Octagon to go over there. It's needed a promotion like that to deliver the platform, the stage, because it has the fighters, it has the talent, it has the want and the need for, uh, you know, mixed martial arts. Yeah, and that's just allowed them to excel, get better and better and better, and, and you know, create big, big moments in their careers. And we go to Frankfurt in September, where they'll get to shine again. But Kexel here doing a fantastic job as we go into our final minute of this bout, been dominant throughout. I mean, to Jan Kuster's, uh credit, has not given up. Not really. He's consistently trying to make something happen. And on, on short notice, taking this fight. Looks in great condition, considering he's been on the bottom this entire time. Yeah, the final 45 seconds for Kexel to open his account here. He was concerned that they wouldn't find the replacement. Actually, there was talk that uh, at some point he got told there wasn't a replacement, so he was getting ready to eat and drink again before the weight cut. And then within an hour, luckily, he hadn't done that. And Jan Chuska had signed on the dotted line, so he was able to maintain his weight cut, make weight at an agreed weight, slightly higher than the 66.3. Featherweight limit, 67 kilograms. And it might not seem like much, but, you know, that extra 700 kilograms, Luke, it means everything, right? It means everything. You tell me that every 100 grams, every 2 grams means everything when you're doing those big weight cuts. Final seconds here. Beautiful display of action from Kexel. Exactly what we expected. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, let's see how judges score this fight. All three judges scored the fight 30-27, in favor of the winner, which is coming from the blue corner, Edward Kexel. A new era begins as Octagon MMA, Europe's best MMA show, is coming to the UK for the very first time. Octagon 48 will go down on November 4th at the world-renowned AO Arena in Manchester. Where UK fans will experience the electric atmosphere and heart-pounding action that Octagon MMA is known for across Europe and beyond. We will bring some of MMA's biggest names, plus a feature bout that puts two UK stars that nobody would expect to see inside the cage, going head-to-head -head after 10 months of vigorous training. Ladies and gentlemen, One of the UK's best comedians will take on reality TV superstar Jake Quicken. This is the fight that many people have had their eyes on. You will see UK MMA's rising star, Liverpool's Shem Rock. And one of the most well-known, most dangerous... This phenom has already racked up eight victories before the time limit, with seven of them in the very first round. And the cherry on top will be the grand finale of the MMA reality TV show, Octagon Challenge, England versus Ireland. After two months of the TV show, at this night in Manchester, the Octagon Challenge champion will be crowned. That's it. Great Britain, Octagon MMA is coming. November 4th at the AO Arena in Manchester.